Total nonsense. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on to our next story. So, the Pope Lick Monster. Now, this is going to end off our cryptid. Right? The Pope Lick Monster is a local legend in Kentucky. He's called the Pope Lick Monster not because he licks popes, but because he apparently haunts an area called the Pope Lick Creek in Kentucky. I don't know why it's called Pope Lick. I don't have no idea why the creek's called that. Anyways, probably because the Pope did get licked there, but it's probably bad timing for that joke. So, Pope Lick Monster is a creature who is half man, no, 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 sorry, part man, part goat, part sheep. Which is the worst animal to be a part of. I mean, outside of, like, a slug. It's probably one of the worst mammals to be part that. What does a sheep do? What supernatural abilities or what advantages would you have as a sheep? You're extra wooly? What do sheep do? They just get sheared. And they taste okay? Part sheep. If I was part sheep, I would be pissed. I would rather be a bloodthirsty like werewolf and have to deal with, you know, the constant struggle to eat humans because at least you could fight crime at that point. But part sheep, ridiculous. So, anyways, he's boy. Well, at least he's part goat, and part goat's actually kind of lame too. You can't really run that fast. Your legs are all messed up. You have horns, I guess. I guess that's the trade-off. Anyways, Pope Lick Monster is part man, part goat, part sheep, and this is the legend. So back in the day, I think it was like the 1920s, early, you know, turn of the century. There was a very cruel ringmaster, circus dude, right? And he had this circus, obviously. And one day, there is a baby, a deformed baby, dropped off at the circus. I'm assuming, like, outside of the bearded lady's tent. And she's like, oh, my God, it's so beautiful, whatever. Anyway, so they get this. You can t- <laughs> you, they get this little deformed baby, and they look at it, and they're like, oh, dude, this is part man, part goat, and part sheep. Because it's extra wooly. And so the circus ringmaster goes, oh, this will go perfect. Perfect in my freak show. This guy is like the ultimate freak. So he, what does he do? He immediately begins abusing the baby. Because he's a dick. Because the ringmaster is like a total jerk. So he's like beating up the baby. He abuses it. He abuses it for years and years and years. And here's my thought. If I found a mutant baby, let's say I was a circus freak. No, no, I'm not the circus freak. Let's say I'm a ringmaster. And I find a mutated baby. I, too, am going to say, this will go great in my freak show. But I'm not going to beat it up, and here's why. I'm going to take that little baby, and I, during the day, he's going to be in the freak show. And at night, I'm going to send him to adult learning classes. I'm going to send him to University of Phoenix online so he can help me with my finances. So he can actually, like, there's so much other stuff this ringmaster could have done with this mutant baby. Put him in the freak show, Yes. But why not send him to business ma- business management school, or just teach him how to like do architecture and build better tents? I don't understand why his default mode was to kick the shit out of this little baby, but he did, and he did it for years and years and years. And eventually, the Pope Lick Monster—that wasn't his name back then. His name was probably like Harold. But anyways, this little freak is growing up. He becomes like a surly teenager. He's smoking cigarettes. And he starts to hate his ringmaster, as you would, because he got beat up. Again, if you sent him to, you know, a dirt adult learning annex, he wouldn't have hated you so much, ringmaster, but you beat him up every day. Now he's this super strong, he has the strength of a sheep, and they're coming across the Pope. So this was a traveling circus. The tr- circus is traveling across the Pope Lick Creek Bridge. It's stormy out. And then a lightning strike hits the bridge. The train goes. If I actually had more time, I probably would edit in professional sound effects. But I don't. So that's what you get. A lightning bolt. Train. Bridge. Seagull. Bears seeing it all through the woods. Okay, anyways, anyway, the train crashes. The Popelik monster is now free of his cage. And he's like, oh. So what does he do? He starts eating the dead. And everyone's like, oh, I'm so glad I'm not dead because that goat monster is totally eating that dude. Then he starts eating the living because, you know, why not? He's been abused all of his life. 
And then he finds the ringmaster and eats him. So that's the initial legend of the Popelik monster. There's other ones that it was a farmer who made a pact with Satan and became a goat. That's, 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 I like the, the circus one because it's just more, there's more to it. And it's also a little more believable than making a pact with Satan and becoming a goat because a lot of people make pacts with Satan. They don't become goats. It's very believable that a circus freak was misused and turned into some sort of monster. And we'll get into that a bit more. But anyways, so today the legend of the Pope Lick monster is that this part man, part goat, part sheep stalks that area. There's a couple things that will happen. One, if you're in, if you walk by any place that has darkness, he reaches out, grabs you, you're never seen again. Sometimes he carries an axe. And if you're walking across the bridge, the Pope Lick Creek Bridge, that's how kind of how you summon him. He'll appear with an axe and he'll chase you. And you have two choices. You can either get chopped up because he's really fast. He has the speed of a sheep. You, he can chop you up or you jump off the bridge and die because it's like a 60 foot drop. And there's, it's not, I don't believe that it's like a creek. So it's not like a river. It's not like you can jump in and then swim away like Jumanji or something. I don't know if they do that in Jumanji, but I never saw that movie. Either of them. But anyway, so the other one is that, and this one's a little more devious, is that he can imitate voices and he can hypnotize you. And the way he hypnotizes you is that he makes it so you don't hear the train coming. Now, again, you're on a bridge with a train track and you're saying, well, Jason, didn't the bridge blow up? And I said, yes, yes, it did. But they repaired it. Well, actually, no, I don't know if the bridge actually blew up. I think that's all just legend. But anyways, there is a working train track there. And if you're walking across it and the Popelik monster sees you, he can make it so you can't hear the train coming. Trains, one of the most notoriously loud land vehicles. You don't hear the train coming. You're on the middle of this bridge. You look up, there's a train 20 feet in front of you. It hits you, splatters you, you're dead. So people say don't go to that area. Now, obviously, that's a really entertaining local legend. Kids go across the train tracks. Teenagers are like, hey, man, let's go down to the Popelik monster's house and see if we can see how he's doing on his community college courses. The, um, it's trespassing. The train company, the people who run it are like, please don't walk on that bridge. It's super dangerous. It's an active train bridge. 20 to 25 trains cross it a day is not a place for you to go hang out with the Goonies now, but people do. And this is where the idea that the Popolic monster actually has a body count because people have fallen off the bridge. Fair enough. People are going to fall off bridges or jump off bridges, but something more interesting happened recently. So there was this young couple who they were legend tripping, which is something I've talked about before. We talked about it during Ong's Hat episode. That's where you go to these places with these legends and with these hauntings, and you go around and, you know, take pictures and then do your own investigation. It's kind of like ghost hunting, but it's with not just ghosts. It's with all sort of local legends. I think it's fascinating. I used to do something like that in Sacramento. It's, you know, just go around and, oh, this is where that happened. This is where that happened. But... This young couple, they are on a trip around the East Coast, that area. And they say, hey, the girl's like, hey, let's go to the Pope Lick Creek because there's this legend of the Pope Lick Monster. And the boyfriend's like, yeah, that's okay. It's a little out of our way, but it's kind of what we're doing anyways. We're looking at these local legends. So they go out there and they say, hey, well, we have to walk across the bridge to summon the Pope Lick Monster. So the boyfriend tells the cops, so you know where this is going, that him and his girlfriend are walking across the bridge. And he looks up, and there's a train coming at him. Didn't even hear it coming. Which, again, I live miles away from a train track. I can hear it. And it's kind of hard not to hear it while you're walking on the train track. But anyways, he says, we looked up. The train was on the bridge. It was near us. There was nowhere for us to go. So he leans off the bridge, and he wraps his arm around a girder and just leans back as far as he can. And the train, he's so close. The train is so narrow. The train actually clips his arm and scrapes his arm up. It doesn't, like, rip his arm off or anything, but cuts his arm up really badly. But as he's hanging on, he looks and he sees his girlfriend flying off of the train track. She couldn't get safe. The train hit her, and she fell to her death. Tragic. You know, it's tragic. He got cited for a misdemeanor, trespassing. Again, just to tell people this is not safe. And she lost her life. And the legend continues. You know, you had this young couple up there that the train was coming and they didn't hear it and the Pope Lick monster may have claimed another victim. Do I think that's likely? No. I, I don't know think the Pope Lick monster hypnotized them. But it is a weird part of that story that how she died was the same way that the legend has always been. 
that he can hypnotize you so you don't hear the train coming. One thing that I've always thought was interesting about these local legends is the the train story itself is relatively true. The beginning, the actual legend, that you could have this deformed baby that got loose from a circus or escaped an accident and was running around the woods of that area. But once you start giving him magical powers, and let's say that happened. Let's say in the 1920s, the circus freak kid got loose in the woods of that area. Let's say it had happened when he was maybe 20 in human years, not sheep years. And he gets loose. He would be like 90 today. He would be collecting Social Security. He would be watching like The Price is Right. Like at a certain point, the legend, and that's what's interesting. These legends never die. Like these characters never age. You think they could be like, yeah, back in the 50s, he was like totally tearing shit up out in the middle of Pope Lake. But the last time I saw him, he was sitting on a park bench playing chess with the Mothman. But what happens is they have to keep the legend going. So now he's this magical creature who can teleport in and out of darkness and he can hypnotize you and stuff like that. It's possible that a mutant was running around in the woods at the turn of the century and then he just fell down a hill and died. Or died because he was, you know, three different species mixed together and that was just too much mutation for your heart to handle. But the initial legend could have a hint of truth. The mind control stuff, not far, far less likely, but like I said, it's kind of creepy that they, she died the way that he hunts. So, that is a local legend that possibly, possibly, actually has a body count. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.